And now for fighter operations. You met her earlier, but you're going to hear more about her now. Julie Beverstein. Raised in Shelburne, Ontario, the daughter of an Air Canada pilot, Julie was exposed to aviation from an early age. She had the opportunity to accompany her father in the cockpit on flights prior to 9-11, after which, of course, that liberty came to an end. But our story really begins when Julie decided on a major goal change while working on a Bachelor of Science degree at the University of Toronto in the pursuit of a career in medicine. In her second year, she began taking flying lessons at the Toronto Flight Centre, the Billy Bishop Toronto City Centre Airport. She transferred her studies to Seneca College in 1998 to complete the Aviation and Flight Technology program. The die was cast. By 2001, Julie had obtained her instructor's rating and a position at ATR, the flying school at Toronto's Island Airport. In the following year, as a Class III instructor, she began instructing at Seneca College on a part-time basis and by 2003 had translated to a full-time instructor's position. While working at Seneca, Julie returned to school to complete her BSc degree. In 2006, Julie was hired by Air Georgian as first officer. Within the year, she was upgraded to captain and flew for Air Jordan, Georgian until 2009, when she was hired by Porter Airlines as a first officer. By 2011, Julie was back in the captain's chair at Porter, as seen here with her brother Adam, who was also a Porter captain. By 2010, she began involvement with Porter's scheduling committee, helping to expedite a, a method in which the pilot's preferences for routes and scheduling could be incorporated into the airline's operations. In 2016, Julie became Porter's pilot recruitment ambassador, traveling coast to coast to promote Porter as a career airline through the company's early connection program for 200-hour pilots and Porter's pilot open houses, a Porter innovation since copied by other airlines, in which President Bob DeLuce and Porter pilots provided insight into working with Porter. Julie introduced Destination Porter, a program that mentors pilots graduating from 13 select Canadian aviation programs coast to coast that guarantees first officer interviews after 1,000 hours of flight experience. She also introduced the Porter Star Award, a peer-nominated award for future pilots who have demonstrated a commitment to mentoring others. Julie likes to think outside the box in finding unique ways to connect with pilots by capitalizing on opportunities to promote the airline as their preferred career choice. As an example, when scheduled to overnight at an airport, Porter's crews will often arrange tours for local college students, demonstrating the aircraft and providing an insight into crew duties and responsibilities. She was a member of the group within the company that facilitated the creation of Women Soar at Porter which is focused on increasing the number of women on the flight deck and making Porter the airline of choice for women. Julie is just one of the leads in Fly Pink at Porter, which has raised tens of thousands of dollars in support of the fight against breast cancer. She coordinated Porter's participation for both Girls Can Fly and Girls Take Flight, with either a booth and sponsorship or by bringing in a plane and giving girls tours. Along with other Porter employees, Julie enjoys visit visiting schools, day camps, and girl guide groups to promote aviation as a great career. In March of this year, Julie was promoted to Assistant Chief Pilot, Pilot Recruitment and Retention at Porter, a position that includes responsibilities for pilot hiring and flight simulation evaluations, training captain line indoctrination training, member of the flight operations management te leadership team, and assisting the chief pilot with his duties, or her duties. Julie spends much of her free time volunteering on numerous advisory boards at aviation colleges, is an active member of the Air Transport Association of Canada's working group, an adjudicator for the University of Toronto Aviation Club competition, and we're very happy to report, has recently joined the Northern Lights Foundation Board of Directors. Julie lives in Oakville with her Bombardier test pilot husband, Glenn, two dogs, and a couple of saltwater aquaria. Ladies and gentlemen, Julie Beaverstein, Flight Operations. And presenting 
Presenting the Flight Operations Award is Heather McGonigal, 2017 LC Award winner in the Flight Operations category. Thank you to the Northern Lights Aero Foundation for this incredible honour and congratulations to the other recipients this evening as well as those being celebrated over the past 10 years. I attended my first Northern Lights Gala three years ago and I remember being completely wowed by the women that were receiving awards that night. I thought I gotta step it up a notch, maybe sit on a couple boards or get another degree or leave the stratosphere, but but I left completely invigorated and inspired and I thought I've gotta do more. And so I did. But I didn't do it alone. And I'd just like to take a moment to recognize a few very important people. Uh, first the women in my life. Uh, my mother, who always taught me to believe in myself, and my grandmothers who taught me that it's okay to be uh, to go against the norm and to be a little bit different. All my amazing uh, porter ladies over there, I, I was trying to articulate what I wanted to say about you, but I, I think I'm just going to say you're all rock stars. <laughs> uh, my non-pilot girlfriends that are here tonight, uh, you've been through all of this with me, and um, I want to thank you for your friendship. To the women who blazed the trail before me, Thank you for your courage and resilience so that I could have this equal opportunity. And now for the men in my life. Uh, first and foremost, I need to thank my husband, Glenn, uh, for always believing in me and uh, encouraging me <laughs> to do more than I thought I was capable of. Because if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be where I am today. Dad, it's been over 20 years since I started flying, and you're still the first person that I want to pick up the phone and call and share my aviation uh, accomplishments and challenges and fun stories. You've been an awesome sounding board uh, and, and a fantastic mentor, so thank you. Uh, my brother Adam, who's here tonight, uh, he's actually the source of all my good ideas. So uh, thanks, Adam. <laughs> and uh, you always keep me grounded, so thank you for that. Uh, Simon, who's here tonight, I've actually never told Simon this, but I remember uh, the first time uh, I met him in the crew room many, many years ago. Uh, I remember thinking at that time, uh, this is a man that I want to learn as much as I possibly can from. And, and now I get to learn from you every day. You've become my mentor, my colleague, and my friend, so thank you. Uh, Pewish, which is now on the other side of the room, but <laughs> uh, Pewish, thank you for giving me the freedom to uh, make mistakes and learn from them and uh, for teaching me to toughen up. <laughs> uh, lastly, I'd like to thank Bob Deleuze for his strong support and leadership in promoting women at Porter and Aviation. Bob, I know your goal is gender parity, and although we're not there yet, we are getting closer. I'm really encouraged when I look around the room and see all the men here uh, this evening celebrating the successes of their friends, their family, and their colleagues. You're an important part of this conversation and we need you at the table to move things forward. I look forward to the day that this event is not only about celebrating the successes of women in aviation, but is about celebrating the successes of all individuals in aviation and aerospace. And it will be then that we've achieved what we're here tonight to do. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh.